Who, who do you support? What's who's your favorite team? RCB. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that. That explains the situation a lot. I I always try to think like, what is it that takes you to those higher stages where you pursue uh, consistently like something more meaningful than your primitive needs. What I am trying to do is I'm trying to create a time capsule. Okay. That's how I look at these podcasts. I'm not earning any money. This is probably a waste of my time. But I'm creating a time capsule. How has life been? Life's been uh, a mixed bag at the moment. I mean, it, nothing to complain about, but I think I can personally do better at the moment. Okay. What do you mean by better? I'm the input that I put to get things done. Like I have not been satisfied with myself. Uh, I think like I've had opportunities, but I am not really doing the work to grab them properly. So yeah, that's what better is for me now. Okay. Okay. I forgot to introduce you. Uh, welcome to the episode, Sashwat. And for the viewers, he Thank is for having me. a very good friend of mine. We have been friends for years since school. We went to Loyola School of Nature together. I'm just glad to have him, have him in my life. I am glad to have a person like you too. In conversations with you is always interesting. So let's start with the podcast. Uh, I personally did not think that you will show up with a uh, set, uh, entire setup dedicated for this podcast so I did not prepare I just <laughs> I had the, the mic I thought it would be cool to yeah, yeah it, it, it does look very good where, where are you recording from though I'm actually in my friend's room I had uh, like chicken pox so I had to move into isolation so my friend had this single room I'm in my college right now this is a okay. hostel room okay so, yeah that's where I am it looks pretty good for a hostel room. <laughs> looks yeah, pretty this is clean. a pretty, pretty decent room. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could stay here, but I'll have to move out in a couple of days. So the last time we properly talked was during the lockdown. Okay. And I remember yeah. that we were, we were both going through a very horrible phase. And uh, you took a drop year. So I would like to ask you about the drop year. How was the drop year? Well, uh... I wouldn't say I like made up for everything I did not do in my preparation years in the drop year. Like uh, drop year was pretty much similar to how my time, like I prepared uh, in 11th and 12th for GE. So it did not go very well. Uh, 12th in 12th, Corona hit and uh, things were, we know how things went from there. So yeah. um, we had four attempts of GE back then and I did not do well uh, even after having the four attempts. Uh, and uh, I just knew that I had to do something related to computer science, something B-Tech. And I did not want to settle for a private college or something back then. So I decided I would take that drop year. But then looking back, I don't think I really made up for things in the drop year but somehow did a little better ended up in this college right now and yeah okay so you you are studying in triple it Bhubaneswar, right yes yeah. how do you like the college i mean it's pretty good uh initially when i came here i used to complain a lot but then when i found out about other colleges the workload they have the number of assignments they have. This college is pretty good in in the sense that it uh, allows you to do whatever you want. It's not like someone is going to come and provide you with things to do. But if you are willing enough, you will get enough space. Um, like after your academics, after your exams, you have enough room for yourself to do things for yourself. You just have to be willing enough to do them. Okay. So, uh, 
talk me through your journey in computer science so um the course in btech computer science is pretty interesting when you join like any any engineering course the first two, first uh, two semesters are nothing about the core subject and you you cannot help but start feeling like uh, engin- the like the engineering course is outdated or something because you already come by listening to a lot of people saying that and like the education system is outdated college courses are outdated but what i have realized over the like i'm in the fifth sem i'm in a i'm in the fifth semester and i realized that the course actually starts to get really interesting it gets better as you um, get into the higher semesters but what happens is uh, like as a fresher when you come in and you are in the first and second semester you are reading a bunch of the things that you have read in 11th and 12th class it's the same physics chemistry like you have seven pa- six to seven papers in a semester and only a single paper is about your core subject and that too is like, like introduction to programming or something it's underwhelming like you come into the course with uh, all these expectations that you are going to read about great stuff and the course actually has a lot of good stuff but initially i what i think is your uh, curiosity academically goes down because you, you think that engineering is the same reading physics chemistry again but by the time you reach your four, third and fourth semester you start to see more of the core subjects but i uh, guess by that by that time you have like lost the discipline to actually read through all the theory like uh, right now we have very interesting uh papers uh, operating systems computer networks compiler design and these are the things i have always wanted to do but for some reason i can't dive deep into them what becomes a general trend is that people come in the first year and they find out that uh, they are not being taught anything they wanted to be taught so self learning becomes a big thing in engineering you start watching youtube videos most people start development or they start dsa and that kind of becomes a general trend uh, academics becomes uh, totally separated like academics is for higher studies or if you want to appear great but no one really uh, reads and understands the theory paper um for the sake of curiosity i don't see that it's either you are reading because you want to crack some exam or you are uh, just developing and learn teaching things yourself so that you can get a placement so yeah that's that's what happens in the course and uh, i i usually i i was very interested in all the cs fundamentals but i think uh, spending time here having this environment around me has sort of also put me into one of these boxes okay so what is your goal at the moment right now i just want to uh, like uh, in the short term i want to secure some position uh in a place like get an internship or something so i can actually start learning how software is uh, written at a industry level how technology is made and maintained uh, at an industry scale in the long term i would like to make something of my own but what i've realized is uh, experience is crucial so right now i'm looking to get some good experience some good industry experience uh how do you guys like engineering students get into these internships well, it's uh, you, you just have to reach it's all about reaching out no matter what your skill level is you go on linkedin um, there's tons of job postings every day you either uh, cold reach the founders the hr or you like that is the easiest way to get it 
you can also go to the uh, career section of different companies you can apply there and if you get selected for an interview they will give you a call and you can get it okay and uh, these are usually paid or unpaid these are usually paid even if they pay you less they usually pay you uh, if you are good they will pay you a good amount so i i i wanted to understand basically right now what is the scope of computer science what is the like there have been a lot of uh, like recent advances right so what do you think is the scope of computer science in the modern world right now well it's really diverse anything you can pick up there's in some way or the other computer science powers those things like recently there's been a lot of ai ml hype so it's overshadowing uh, what computer science is but uh, everything from like if i list out some domains in computer science there's development there's security there's embedded systems there's uh, performance systems and uh, ai ml data science these yeah. are plenty of things you can pursue and uh, yeah you can uh, like look up there are plenty of things but uh, majorly if you want to see its software development or data or these things in general what are you interested in? i am i have been developing since the past two years mostly i have been doing web technologies recently i have been interested in data i have not dived deep into it uh, development is pretty interesting like currently i'm just trying trying stuff out i'm trying to do everything see what uh, everything has to offer i have loved uh, web development so far and so at some point i also want to get into data okay okay interesting what are your thoughts on the recent uh, crowd strike error that took place crowd strike uh, it has some pretty interesting uh, explanations i saw uh, it was i mean it's first it's just uh, bizarre to see something happen on such a large scale even after we have so many standards in place that uh, like a single bug can take down so many systems together uh, you see like modern software development there are so many layers and so many uh, like safety mechanisms that your software shouldn't break Uh, which is also the thing that really overwhelms you like uh, whenever you are writing software and you are thinking of writing something big something scalable you you are always afraid of these layers of abstractions you have to learn to ensure that your soft software doesn't crash and to see something like as big as crowd strike with uh, so many users so many enterprise users uh and just a single bug like they had some null point d reference and it just took down system so all, all over the world it was just well shocking to see that have you been interested in in something re related to medicine something related to the med tech industry i had interest in medicine like uh, before i came into computer science like in general i like like to read about diseases and treatments and everything uh not like uh, i never wanted to pursue it professionally but uh, the subject interested me recently when i had chicken pox i uh, had a health scare so that also got me thinking about uh things and how uh the health healthcare can be bettered with technology things could be done more smoothly so that people have more knowledge and more access 
to in, in information in medicine. Yeah, I, I guess that's okay. But speaking about health, you look healthier than the last time we spoke. Uh, is it the hostel? For, for the past seven days, I have had a pretty good uh, routine because I, I've been in isolation. I have had to drink a lot of water because of my medications. I've been having really simple meals and I think that's and I used to like go for runs and exercise before I had chicken pox. So I think that's contributed to that. So so do you still run? Yeah. The moment I get out of here I want to go for a run again. I started running like a month, month and a half back and I really enjoy it. Yeah. How much do you usually run? Like, are you preparing for a specific goal, like a sub three hour marathon or something? Uh, I like currently I just uh I was talking with my friend. We have this uh, marathon event in our college uh, uh, techno cultural fest. It's a a five k run. It's uh not much, but uh, usually we don't go to run there. We we are usually lazy about running there. So I was just talking to my friends that if we are running, why not like prepare to do 5K in 20 minutes or something? I guess that's uh, the goal currently. I don't have any strategy right now. I'm just trying to run every day, make it yeah. a habit. Uh, I, like I've struggled to make exercise and habit in in the past. So... Right now, the goal is only to run every day uh, and I'm not uh, focusing too much on my technique or how I'm going to get a certain target. The only target right now is do it every day. Okay, nice. Is there something that you wanted to talk about specifically on this podcast? Not really. I just I wanted to be asked about things and just speak. Nothing specific I had in my mind. So do you have any aspirations of um, getting a job into the MANG companies? I mean, it's uh, not black and white. Like, um, I'm never sure if I want it or not. Sometimes I just don't even want a job and do something of my own. But when I see how the market is and how things are built, I realize sometimes it's good to have experience in places that know how to make tech and also sometimes you see how like the life inside man companies is. So it's an on and off. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'm not sure where it will end. Let's talk about your finances. Um, so I would you consider yourself to be good with your finances? I would not consider myself very good. I try to save and that? I mean if I like I'm broke right now. So if I was good with my finances, I would have a good amount of money. I mean I try to develop some good habits. I try to save and invest. But then, yeah, I think I can better gauge my financial habits when I have a fixed source of income. Currently, I do not. So it's difficult to say how I uh, maintain my money. Where Where is the maximum percentage of your money going into at the moment? I mean, I don't spend a lot on things. It's usually experiences. I save up money uh, for trips. For uh, yeah, it, it's usually uh, for trips. If I have to travel somewhere with my friends, that's where the majority of my savings go. Or else, I I don't uh, spend on anything else too much. Where have you gone with your friends? What is your most memorable trip so far? Uh, I've been to Shillong. Uh, we went to Cherapunji. Uh, nice. That was a pretty good trip. Uh, recently, we went to Mahindragiri. Um, 
then it was good too uh cherapunji trip was great we had this uh, 7 km trek up and down it was really challenging uh, something we'll remember for the rest of our lives uh, in that uh, trek the trek like really challenged us so we did not know our minds and body could push through so much uh, it was a double decker in cherapunji it's like this uh, trek that goes up and down you uh, and there's a bunch of waterfalls in between you stop there uh, yeah it was a great experience cherapunji was great nice to hear that what is the next trip coming up yeah we haven't thought of it yet uh, like we went to mahindra giri on like two days what september 3rd we went there on independence day and we were like pretty spent after that trip and yeah there we there's still some time before we have an itch to, to go somewhere again how about your friends like uh, have you found some good friends over there yeah i have some great friends over here we like it's it's great in every aspect what happens usually is when you come into college your seniors are like uh you have a group of 10 right now but when you go to your second and third year it becomes five and then three and then you are all alone but uh, i haven't seen that with us like we were the, these nine and 10 people initially and still we have a good bond and we do things together it's great that's that's really rare you know that right yeah i, I yeah. cherish whatever we have yeah so what do you value the most in a friendship um i guess it's understanding like uh, you know things um uh, you can't always give time to everyone but if you have that understanding that even after two years three years you call up that person and you can like have a conversation with the same energy and you are you don't feel apologetic about not being in touch i think that's something great to have in a friendship yeah what about romantic relationships have you had any after uh, school no. no no i have not after the school was the last time and after that i haven't felt ready like i have uh felt like i need to spend more time with myself and i think i'm spending time with myself still yeah fair enough what about you how have things been for you in that area after after school even i haven't had any so okay i mean, I mean there should be like a phase where you should spend all your energy on yourself and yeah, this true. phase that's is true. as good as any right now i'm very happy you know like uh the past two weeks have been like on top of everything uh i had dengue and i i think the high fever did something to my brain and suddenly i'm just happy right uh, there's just something about a disease i think even after uh, having chicken pox i feel good yeah yeah what, what do you think like uh, what have been the things contri- that contributed to you feeling like on top in the past two weeks i, I can't i i can't really answer that because it, it's like I, i although i know that action precedes motivation but what really happens is that you keep trying to act and the motivation never shows up and then you stop acting as well yeah <laughs> right yeah i can i can totally relate to that <laughs> So, so suddenly what happened is that uh, my mood was elevated and when my mood is elevated i find the most boring things to be very interesting you know like even writing records i was enjoying which is like the most boring things and suddenly just everything yeah that is place. okay yeah even i have felt that like there's uh, so many things i have on my to do list right now and when i look at them i like have to muster up the motivation and i have to push myself i have to be gritty about doing it and i think that if like 3 years back when 
I did not enter into college. If someone asked me to do this thing, I would be so excited to do it. But for some reason, I don't know what's happened. That even the most interesting things take so much effort right now. Yeah, and that that sounds like depression. You know, it's a it's a symptom of depression. Probably. They call they call anhedonia. You know, loss of interest in things that you previously found interesting. Like not loss of interest is not the right term. Pleasure, like your threshold for pleasure increases. Like you need to put more efforts into certain activities to find it more pleasurable. Does does that happen if you do too much of things that like cheaply provide you the pleasure? Yeah, I mean that, that what you're saying is basically uh, when we destroy our dopamine dop dopaminergic system. system. Yeah, yeah, that does contribute yeah, to and... that. I mean, what what's a way to recover that? Like a detox, like you don't watch shorts and movies, and just spend a month trying to like you know you know it's, to, it's, to get better. It's, it's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword because dopamine detox might be okay for a person who is having a normal phase, but is uh, addicted to his phone. But his mood is normal. But when your mood is low and you go on a dopamine detox, it might be de detrimental. It's a double edged sword. How do sword. you make out which is what? You consult a doctor. That sounds fair. You what a what do you usually do? Like, what contributes to, like, uh, there's having a healthy brain and there's having a healthy mind. What keeps your mind healthy? Like, what keeps you emotionally at a level you desire to be? It might, might sound like a very superficial thing, but sleep, right? When I, when I sleep, my, when my sleep schedule is fixed, when I sleep at 10, wake up at 6, like half my problems are, go are gone away. That is that is so, so true. Even I have felt that. Like uh, having a good sleep schedule is very difficult. But whenever you are sleeping, like you are having quality sleep, I think that's the best thing. Like physically, mentally to keep you healthy. It's even I, I, in isolation, I have been sleeping a lot and I think that has contributed to making me feel so much better than I, I was before that. Yeah. And and one more thing which has helped me is uh, like I I have this habit of doom scrolling social media. Okay. We, we all do. Yeah. So that is horrible. That is a very horrible thing to do. So therefore, I, I used an app, okay? It was suggested by Ali Abdul. And despite of my hatred towards him, I still followed that advice. Uh, it's, it's an app called OneSec, okay? OneSec. It's available, on, it's available on App Store. It's not, I don't know whether it's available on Play Store, but I'm pretty sure that there must be some counterpart to it. What it does is that the second you launch the app, it does not let you uh, engage with the app. It brings its own page okay. and it has a counter of 10 seconds and then it takes tells you to take a deep breath and then it has it asks you the reason why you are using the app firstly by the time yeah so so by the time the counter ends uh, your brain automatically decides realizes that uh, what am i what am i even supposed to do in this app i was going to doom scroll anyways so then you just remove that app and go back to your living your life and not doom, doom scrolling and even if you're using it, that you're consciously, a... yeah, even if you're not, you're, even if you're using the app, you're consciously saying the, tell, telling the app why you are using it, whether you're procrastinating, whether you're sad, whether uh, there is some official work you want to do. I, I really uh, it's like much like the five, five second rule. Like yeah. Yeah. Before doing something, you stop and tell yourself why you want to do it. That's yeah. a very interesting concept. So that has stopped doom scrolling to some extent. What I do is then I take hotspot to my laptop and I start doom scrolling on my laptop. So <laughs> yeah, how many times have you like caught yourself watching shots on a like in the browser, YouTube browser or something? I, I, many times. <laughs> Many times, I I delete I delete all my social media. Okay, there are phases where I delete all my social media. I disable all my social media. I can't delete YouTube because I've spent thousands of hours making these videos. 
I can't just get rid of yeah. them. And there's no no feature to like temporarily disable in YouTube either. So yeah, even account deletions they don't just let you delete your account right away. There's this uh thirty day safety period. Yeah, and usually yeah. you recover your account within those yeah thirty days. It's like a relapse. Uh, I have been actually reading this book. Yeah, the book. It's called yeah. uh, the free freedom model, and it's very different. Like any other book I have read, every other book like tries to scare you out of an addiction by telling you the risks of what something is. But uh, this book is about making a choice, and uh, it 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 also has had pretty good success by the people who have used it, and. Uh, I I really like the thought of the book of how every addiction like the book majorly is about drug and alcohol addiction but it's famously used for any kind of addiction anything that uh like if something can mentally cure like they even uh, like the book's whole philosophy is don't use the word cure don't say it's an addiction let's say quote on quote it says to cure your addiction uh it's a choice because um, all our addictions are learned uh, misconceptions and uh, i mean i don't want to say anything about the book if you read it it's just awesome how they take you through this mental model that can slowly untangle and you start feeling good about yourself and not having this uh, shadow or this weight behind your head for whatever kind of addiction you have you should try to read it uh, right now i'm reading some uh, reading a book called the righteous mind is it visible i'm saying what, what is this book about this book is about how good people are divided by politics and religion basically how ideologies form and how and why we are intolerant towards ideologies which are different from us that sounds interesting you know the interesting part about this book is that let's come to some inter- uh, something very interesting which i find personally very interesting is that uh, do you remember that uh, i don't think you must have read but uh, there was this evolutionary biologist a very uh, the guy who gave the theory of modern evolution his name was jbs haldane okay he settled in bhubaneswar okay. he was from bhubaneswar yeah but he settled in bhubaneswar in the 1960s and hey, wow. he was like a very prominent figure in evolutionary biology similarly a very prominent figure in uh, the research behind morality uh, his name is richard schweder he also lived in odisha for a, a long time to conduct his research on morality so uh, i fu- i found it very strange why people s- such great minds are coming to Odi- odisha and spending their lives especially the end part of their lives and i think that it might have to do with the fact that once you have a certain amount of knowledge and understanding you tend to find everything to be pointless fundamentally meaningless so in search of meaning uh since odisha is like a very spiritual place they land up here that might be one of the explanations okay you said uh, uh, once you have a great level of understanding of things everything starts to become pointless yeah that's okay that that is an interesting thought have you read like these 18th 19th century uh, philosophers like albert camus i actually struggle to read like but mm-hmm. i like go through the tldr of everything no i i was talking about uh, philosophers like the 18th 19th yeah yeah like albert camus uh he had this theory called the absurdism right he talked about yeah i've heard some- of yeah he talked about something called the myths of sisyphus 
Okay. Have, have you heard about it? So, no. So, what is so, it? So, so Sisyphus was like an ancient Greek character. And he was punished by a god to carry a rock to the top of the mountain only for it to fall back again and then he has to carry it again. And he keeps doing it. Okay. Albert Camus said that sometimes you should imagine Sisyphus happy. Like what he was doing is pointless, but he was enjoying it. See, what he says is that the larger meaning of life is that it's fundamentally meaningless. Or even if there is a meaning, it is way beyond our capacity to comprehend at the moment, according to the science and any other knowledge we have. So we, we need to look at it in a different way. That since there is no inherent meaning to life, you can pretty much do anything you want. You're not destined to do one thing. Yes. Uh, it, I have also heard of this, I think. So absurdism is like this view that life has no meaning, but instead of having this pessimistic view that it has oh it has no meaning you have this optimistic view that now that it has no meaning i can do whatever i want yeah yeah i mean i i, I don't i can't feel that but i uh, think that's uh, what the philosophy is about of absurdism yeah it it is what the philosophy is about and i i feel that there are a lot of i mean it is a good way to look at it for someone who is like extremely uh, depressed and finding everything meaningless. But when we look at it practically, I feel that there are a lot of flaws. Firstly, you can't really do whatever you want because of the, of the several structures we have built. Like uh, there is a lot of uh, financial aspect involved. Yeah, fi finance is just one of the structures. There are so many other things which are stopping you. So I don't think it's like a very accurate analogy that you can do whatever you want. I mean, we because, always like dream of yeah. an escape, an exit from our life. But uh, like f five years back, I thought it would be after two years. Uh, two years back, I thought it would be now. But somehow I think that I keep chasing that escape point in my life where I will be free and actually uh, be able to do whatever I want. Mm. I, I don't think you can actually get to that point. Yeah, I mean, you, we can up to a certain degree, but I don't think there will be a, some absolute point where you can yeah. actually just do yeah. whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, even if you do, what I have mostly noticed is what uh, we think that by doing something, we are going to feel a certain way. Usually it doesn't happen. Usually when like you get something or you do something it doesn't make you feel the way you thought it would uh, like a lot of other dynamics in your life have changed um, will change when you achieve that and it's True. Uh, yeah and and it will never be like we achieve it and then it's done like human mind always looks for uh, new things to do more without 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 things to do it will like it will actually be detrimental to our mental health and eventually yeah. to our physical health like we all have this notion of having a financial independence whenever we think like we can have financial independence we can just sit on netflix and chill for the rest of our lives but that's i impossible. think yeah. Uh, that's yeah that's impossible i was even watching a ted talk the other day it uh, said about the title was very interesting it was something like what else there is to life uh, other than happiness or something like that um, and it said that we have even a more fundamental purpose as emotional beings than chasing happiness it said we must chase meaning at every point in your life you have yeah. to like keep looking for meaning it's yeah. an endless pursuit, but uh, to find meaning in different things you know, of different nature is what's going to keep you sane yeah. and fulfilled. Do you, do you know who came up with this uh, theory of no. life being a pursuit of meaning? I, I just, I'll show you it. I'll show you. Okay. Is this guy, Victor Frankl. Okay. Yeah. 
so Not sexual meaning this is right. yeah 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 so he was a yeah. prisoner in the concentration camp and he basically wrote this book about his experiences in the camp and uh, he wrote stuff about why people chose to live in that camp despite of being treated so badly they could have killed themselves they, they had electric wire fences around the camp they could have just ran and uh, barged into those fences and died but still some people chose to live and eventually talked about uh, the meaning of life what he thinks is so coming to why people chose to live uh, he said a very inspirational quote okay very inspirational line it's the stories we tell ourselves that keeps us going sometimes these stories may be a higher version of the truth and sometimes these stories may not be true at all how this guy lived how victor frankel survived is that he imagined having conversations with his wife and uh, he did not know whether his wife was alive he, or not wow. right he had this fake hope in his head that his wife might be alive and he's having a conversation and he'll probably get out of the camp and still have a conversation with his wife so this hope is what kept him going this story that he made up that his wife is still alive and he is having a conversation with him this is what kept him going and he eventually came to the conclusion that life is a pursuit of meaning this is him that said it first and therefore he 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 designed a therapy uh therapy around it it's called logo therapy right yeah i heard right. of it so basically in this therapy the therapist helps you find what you find meaningful right basically find meaning oh that is a beautiful line you sometimes have to tell yourself a higher version of a story or a story that is not true at all yeah it is it is some good stuff i have always wanted to read this book i was never able to read it it's it's a it's a, it's a very know, tiny book it can... is so good yeah you you can you can finish this book in like a couple of days it's a very thin book very thin book go for it bro it's a beautiful read how do you read your books like what's 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 your process see uh, what what i am doing right now is i i hate going to the lectures there was a point where i loved going to the lectures okay so i was saying that there was a point where i loved going to lectures during first year and second year but now i don't okay and uh, there are many reasons for it but mostly because i don't know like in theory uh, clinical subjects should be more interesting in in first and second year we read pre clinical and para clinical subjects so when we come to the clinics it should in theory be more interesting and the subject is no doubt interesting okay but the way it is being taught i don't like it and therefore i don't want to be there in the lecture but for reasons attendance reasons i have to be there otherwise they won't let me write the main exam and they last for money if i uh, i'm not able to fulfill my attendance criteria and i ask being a very a deemed college it's a lot of money so i don't want to pay that so i read books in lecture halls in my lecture hall that's how i read i i just take a pen i take a book and okay. i i start reading line by line and uh, when i feel it's boring i skip some pages i start with a fresh chapter and uh, if if there is something that resonates i write it down on the first page okay something that resonates with me i write it down in the first page and that's how i when i have to go back to that book that is what i read i don't read the entire book so that's my strategy it's plain simple it takes time okay but i i i read like one book in a month but i do so i've read close to like 30 that's books in pretty good yeah I, i've read to i've read close to like 30 books in my mbbs curriculum so far i i have i can so relate to what you said right now like the subjects are so interesting but the way it is being taught like is a real problem what is happening with me right now as well like like i said the uh, 
we are in the core subjects which are supposed to be very interesting but when you sit down in the lecture all the way it is being taught you can't focus on it for more than 5 minutes yeah uh, i have also tried to read books but uh, i think because i try to read them on my phone like digitally don't do that difficult to yeah. yeah it's i i can never read a book digitally uh, yeah. there's some just something about a physical copy that like lets you be in the zone rather than yeah. a digital copy yeah do you read a lot of digital books i i don't i don't actually i'll tell you why is that i what i have personally observed i don't know it might be true for you or not when i read a physical book and i read the same thing from a pdf my retention from a physical book is like significantly more compared to if i am reading it from a pdf i'm not even going to the part where i talk about eye strain and uh, other aspects of it but just like memory part of it i feel that i remember more when i read from a physical book compared to a, yeah. a soft copy what about you something about holding it physically yeah. like no i i like to read physically as well but uh... uh it's not always possible to have a physical copy like you find some book interesting and you yeah true it it does it does end up costing a lot of money so i usually have a pdf yeah like i have a lot of physical books but i have like i hardly have uh, read 10% of the books so i tried uh, to have this system where i first went through some part of the soft copy and if i really resonate with the book and then buy it but uh, yeah reading a digital copy does not just feel good it's like uh, i don't know watching a youtube video to learn how to drive it's, it's, yeah it yeah. just does not it's not the same yeah, yeah. even if it's digital you know you what you could do is that you could you could probably read it on something on a bigger screen yeah Not yeah I, I, that is why i try to read on my laptop screen it's yeah. uh, anyways it's like when you are reading it from pixels for some reason it fe- feels very virtual and abstract when yeah, you have the book does, with you, you you like you said you absorb a lot more yeah i i think that has to do with the fact that more amount of senses are involved like firstly yeah. you visually you are, you are seeing it you're touching it you you you're putting your fingers or you're putting a pen and you're you're going through the words and you're also smelling the book if that plays a role i don't know but more senses are involved so maybe that's the reason why retention is high and maybe also because of the fact that the book's sole purpose is to like deliver you the knowledge on the specific yeah. topic yeah. when you are using a device like you have uh, associated the device with so many things like yeah so absolutely things yeah yeah device. so it's just very difficult you, to be you seem to have a better understanding about the brain than me bro <laughs> seriously <laughs> it's yeah, start st- start that's what some, i just felt start a medtech startup just do it i i i just have a like general interest for psychology yeah. and philosophy i i try to observe things and try to read things it's uh, very interesting yeah i don't know about starting up but i really want to like dive deep into it and like maybe write a book or something about it someday yeah i'll i'll be the first one to buy it bro for sure for sure you should co co author a book i think we'll yeah. write a great book if we co author something that's a great idea you know we can work on that i had a lot of i had a lot more questions coming to my head but everything just went away uh um, it's okay i i i'm actually enjoying the natural flow of the conversation so uh, like picking up context from what we are already talking about you you said you invested money right you invest whatever you save how do you invest what what is your strategy i i don't have any strategy 
neither am i a very good investor i used uh, like for whatever investments i have done till now i used small case i don't know if you are aware yeah uh, i am aware of it they 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 make th these bunch of uh, uh, stocks together of similar fields right that's what yeah. it is right yeah it's it's pretty popular now yeah. especially after the ankur variku <laughs> it's Yeah, yeah, I used to invest through small cases, but then I realized that's not the best way to do it. But till now, I haven't like. So, so, uh, so you paid the I mean, amount to small case as well because you need to pay like an annual six thousand fee. No, that uh, they have a few uh, free small cases and a few subscription based small cases. Okay. uh but even for the free small cases you pay a small like 20 30 amount rupee fee which is also i think not worth it and uh, if you are investing like uh, in lakhs then probably it does not make a big difference but uh, yeah it's better if i don't give financial advice okay so are you in touch with friends from laiwala not uh not actually not many of them few what about friends like i said you just yeah, yeah. what about omkar go again what about omkar yeah i i, co I called him I, i i just called him recently so yeah. i i um, before like uh, how my chicken pox was diagnosed was also interesting it started on my scalp yeah it usually I starts thought, like that uh, yeah but uh, i did not know that it was very yeah. unusual for me and uh, so i thought it was some kind of uh, infection so i uh, yeah. went for a consultation i went to some and uh, they did uh, i was like uh, i did not show them um, the spots properly i had these tiny spots on my face so the doctor said it was uh, seborrheic dermatitis and some acne thing and i came back but uh, i was still feeling like uh, something is off so i uh, called omkar i uh, sent him some photos i asked him what do you think why don't you diagnose this and uh, he said it's probably the same thing uh, i think that was the last conversation i had with him uh, recently i remember like not from my medical knowledge but from my childhood when i had chicken pox i i remember how i found out is that when when i used to comb the skin used to come out of those pustules or yeah you said you uh, comb and usually th these crusty yeah stuff yeah. starts to fall yeah. off from yeah. your scalp and that's what happened to me as well and i thought why not it must be some kind of scalp infection or something Mm. It turned out to be chicken pox. So what I hope we talk? could have done this offline. Yeah, me too. I mean, it was just bad what timing of my disease. Yeah. I was, Tell I me was whenever at... you are in Bhubaneswar uh, again. Let me. Yeah, know. yeah. I, I will definitely let you know. Your college is near Som, right? Yeah, yeah. How far is it from Som? No, uh, four kilo, four five kilometers. Yeah, so, so, you know there is this apartment complex called Trident Galaxy. It's, yeah, I was. It's it's, okay. it's it's near so. So I mean, you can come there if you want because I my grandparents live there, so I can go there and we can record in that place. Yeah, sure. Wherever is fine. I can come anywhere. Yeah. Do you have a vehicle? no but uh, i can just don't, take people some yeah, parents vehicle yeah don't you have aspirations of having a vehicle like did your parents not allow or something no uh, like uh, aspirations as in uh, to have a like to possess a vehicle or just as a necessity to possess a vehicle i am not a big enthusiast that way to like possess a vehicle yeah but uh, from a necessity standpoint i actually i have been very lazy i did not uh, get my license 
till now so my parents just don't uh, allow me to ride without a license so yeah I, I, as soon as i get a license maybe i can ne negotiate for something with them i mean i'm in the exact same position but uh, i i really don't want to have a vehicle and uh, the sole reason is that i've seen my friends who have had vehicles like the transition of like the transition from first year to third year like they used to be at least 10 kgs lighter than what they are right now so they okay. our, our class is like seven we live in hostel okay so our class is like 400 500 meters away they take their bike to go to class and come back and our mess is like 100 meters away from our hostel okay so they take their bike to go to mess and come back so <laughs> they don't walk and uh, that uh, yeah so that scares uh, me I, I, yeah yes yes i think that's like a, a more of a choice like it does not matter at some point in your life you are going to have a vehicle and you will have to commute between these 3 400 meters so i think it's all about habit and i think if it was someone like you you would not take your ride to like 400 meters away yeah could be you know and but it's but, a preference yeah it's, it's definitely a preference but i just see that the majority choose to do this and uh, i'm scared that yeah, if maybe, i get a vehicle if, maybe i will also turn out like that i mean so. you can conform to what everyone is doing it's possible yeah. Do you like uh, like to ride? Like, do you enjoy riding or driving? Uh, I'll I'll tell you something. That I don't think I, if my parents hear this, they'll probably scold me. What happened is that I was I was cycling. Okay, I I loved cycling. I still do, but on eighth of December, twenty twenty three, I was taking a U turn. A bike came and hit me. Okay. And I flew and I fell on the road. I had a, a lot of abrasions and I had a few contusions on my lower back. Nothing serious. We did an x-ray. There were no fractures, but the pain was there for a month. It was that bad. But then after a month, I went back on my saddle, on my cycle. And I went on the road and I was so scared. Like every honk behind me scared me. Every time a vehicle click came I close to me, that. my heartbeat rose. And since that day, I have not been able to sit on a two-wheeler, like even behind my friends. So I have had like yes. some mild amount of PTSD since that day. And, uh, you know, it, it, it sounds like a, such a small incident, like you just crashed your cycle. But... For some reason, it no, ju it's just stuck in my for, head. For us, no, it can be terrifying. I can imagine. Like if, like I haven't met an accident, but I have like uh, came to like near accident situations, and they are terrifying, and they really like uh, take a toll on your moral. Like it, it, it takes some time to recover from that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I tried cycling so many times after that, but it was never the same. Right. It, I was all, I was, I'm still scared of taking a U-turn on my cycle. Uh, especially the one in front of our college, because our college is uh, situated just beside the highway. Okay. So everyone is riding fast. So it's, okay. I still struggle with that. You, so I'm not, I'm not cycling at the moment. You used to ride a lot, like a lot, like uh, I remember you shared your Strava, it was like 130 kilometers or something. Yeah, yeah, I've done 303 kilometers, that's my highest, 19 hours it took. 300, wow. Yeah, and cut to now, like, and not uh, even, yeah. And not even you don't cycle. ride as much now? No, I yeah. don't. I don't. It's like, is it the paranoia or what? Yeah, it's it's the fear. You know, I'm scared of riding at the moment. 
it may be some at some point of my life i move to a place where the road ethics are better maybe then i re start my cycling journey your story reminds me of that like it reminds me of a typical yes theory episode i don't know if you have seen the one where uh, uh, he trains for like uh, paragliding or something which one there is is he that a recent one meets and... no it's very old actually it's like it's pretty old 3 4 years back yeah i don't even remember the guy's name yeah recently yes theory I has had a lot of content. changes yes theory. yeah a lot of changes though you know i haven't watched a lot of them recently because there there were two the two of their original members are not with them anymore they have added a new member called stefan okay who, who is always very happy always trying to make friends it's a new kind of content now okay it's still good though yeah. they always try to give some message which is good yeah, their core philosophy the whole yes theory thing Yeah, I always seek discomfort. It. Seek discomfort. Yes. Do you make videos now? I have. You're not making a lot of videos. No, I. I'm not making a lot of videos. The last video I made was was in March. Uh, I I summarized my second year MBBS. Yeah, I saw that. It was a good one. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, the thing is that it those videos take up a lot of time. and a lot of energy like i'm completely drained out and therefore i shifted to something lighter the entire point of this podcast is that it should be lighter but right now i, I am struggling with that as well like i calculated that it takes me around 17 18 hours a week to produce a podcast like include that that time includes everything okay. like script, scripting the questions and uh then interviewing the person and then editing the person and then uploading the person uploading is like the worst thing of it all because it takes a lot of time this is like a 10 gb file if it's a 2 hour long conversation it's a 10 gb file and i i'm uploading it out of my phone okay so well i mean my data like the final compressed video like the exported video is 10 gb yeah yeah 1080p wow. 1080 so it takes a lot lot of my time but but you know it's still less work because it does not take a lot of my energy because when i'm because there is not a lot of you know i just have to make simple cuts i just have to get rid of the gaps and some mistakes here and there simple edits i am not doing any hardcore editing or anything very creative which is taking up my potential like my mental potential so it's just mechanical work but it's like 17 18 hours of work in a week what, what do you use to edit now premiere I, or final cut pro i use davinci use davinci why the transition to davinci uh, do you do you remember this guy called sam colder yeah yeah he shifted to davinci 3 4 years back I saw yeah, that I video. His video. I, I saw that video, and I I was like, I have to shift to Da Vinci. So yeah, Da Vinci is great. Yeah, I I use the free one. I don't use the free one. Pretty much has everything you need. Yeah, you know, uh, I I forgot to mention something when I was talking about the pursuit of meaning. Okay, life is a pursuit of meaning, like Victor Frankl said. There are a few more school of thoughts regarding that. There was this guy called. Uh, You, you might since you said you reads uh, a lot of psychology, I'm sure you must have heard about someone called Sigmund Freud. Yeah, uh, yeah, I have uh, heard of him. I have also heard his works, but I haven't had the chance to read a lot of it. Yeah, so yeah, so his core philosophy was that life is a pursuit of pleasure, right? And uh, there was another psychiatrist. There were like three pillars of um, modern psychiatry. more by modern i mean early 20th century there was sigmund freud there was carl gustav jung carl jung and there was alfred adler so alfred adler has the, had had this philosophy had this theory in psychology where he said that life is a pursuit of power 
Alfred Adler is like a very controversial divided figure. Okay. He said he has said some very controversial stuff like trauma does not exist and uh, all problems are interpersonal relationship problems. He was the founder of a field of psychology called individual psychology. And he also gave terms like inferiority complexes. So keeping that aside, he said that life is a pursuit of power. But, you know, I personally feel that Sigmund Freud is right. That what is the power eventually leading to? Why, why do people choose violence? Why do people want to feel powerful? Because eventually it feels good. In, there's this movie, right? Imitation, imitation Game. The Imitation Game. Have you watched it? Yeah, yeah. Right. It, yeah. Um, the, uh, the, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. So the, the character Benedict Cumber, Cumberbatch plays, he gets bullied a lot. And then he explains to someone else that why do people like violence? Because it feels good. It feels good to be powerful. Why, why do you want to have meaning? Because eventually it gives you more uh, fulfillment, which is again a form of pleasure. So eventually it is all about the pursuit Feeling of pleasure. Good. Yeah. So I feel Sigmund Freud is personally right. But see, Sig it, it was a hundred years ago. There are so many uh, fallacies in his theories. A lot of them have been proved wrong. And uh, he was like an Im important person. Like if he did not give those wrong theories, we would not be where we are right now. So he was important. So that's what I wanted to add. Yeah, I even... After you have mentioned, uh, no matter what, like how good uh, works I have read on what the meaning of life is, ultimately what I practice is, is the pursuit of pleasure. Like even if I like realize that life is a pursuit of meaning, even if I realize sometimes that life has no meaning, ultimately in your in our day to day lives uh, i think we practice pursuing pleasure is, is that even true for you yeah it is i don't want it to be true but that is what what it is do you think it's like a product of how our lifestyles have evolved or do we just prefer to be that way what is it i, I think it's a combination of everything. It's a combination of our biology and our modern lifestyle. Yeah. Because, like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me. It's not uh, that only now that we have all these social media platforms and the short term content and easy access to food that we pursue pleasure. I think it's always been this way that we have like uh, we always have spent a lot of time in the bottom part of Maslow's pyramid. Yeah. And I, I always try to think like, what is it that takes you to those higher stages where you pursue uh, consistently, like something more meaningful than your primitive needs. Yeah. But uh, even like uh, you see in grown-up people, they still try to, most of the people that you see try to pursue the basic things all the time. Yeah, they do. You, know, you mentioned really about... Depressing. Yeah, it is. You mentioned about Abraham Maslow. You mentioned about his hierarchy of needs, right? And the base yeah. being like food, water, shelter, and sex. I sometimes wonder whether sex should be in the bottommost level because there is a level, I think it's the third level where it is about love and belongingness. I feel sex should belong there. I personally feel that. And to be honest, no, I haven't... At the bottom level, at the bottom level, I think the sex is about uh, more about procreation. But as we go to the love and belonging, like uh, uh, I think the bottom la uh, layer is um, physiological needs then you have these safety and belonging needs I don't remember but I think uh, at, at at the most bottom sex is not uh, 
recreational or it's not meant to be like transcendent or something. I think at that level, it's only about reproduction. And after that, uh, it may be in the love and belongingness, it, uh, it also includes sex there. Are you interested in politics? Like, do you follow politics? I don't actually. Like, I, I, I have been trying to, um, but I don't really keep up with it. I, like, I hope I do. Do you, do you, do you know the name of the new chief minister of Odisha? Yeah, yeah. Mohan Sharan Maji. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I struggled with that, you know. I st it was took me like two, three weeks to remember that name. Yeah, to even me, I the number of times I have said Manoj Charan Maji and some other variations of the name. How is he? How is how is Bhuneshwar right now? Bhuneshwar, I don't know. I think I don't uh, like in general, not just now. I don't have a lot of exposure to things that uh, give me an idea about how the government is working. It's usually by listening to other people's opinions that I have opinions about the current government, which is what I'm trying to change. I'm trying to be more observant and trying to know things better so that, yeah, yeah in general, I have a very bad knowledge of politics. I'm trying to make it better. Yeah. What is the placement situation in your college? Uh, last year, uh, um, like after uh, COVID and the Russia-Ukraine war and everything, market was down. So last year wasn't, uh, like last year it hit uh, a real low, it was bad. So now this year the placement has started and uh, we have already gotten some, like our seniors have already bagged some good offers and I think it's going to be like by the time the placement drives end uh, it's going to be much better than last year you you also like cricket right did, did you guys eventually go and play turf cricket we did not actually uh, uh, I don't know what happened uh, yeah like uh, we decided to go and play but uh, like few people bailed out at the last moment so we went to bowling instead. How is everyone? What are you planning to do it? No. They are good. They are, they are just like how they used to be. <laughs> how is Babu? His name is Babu, right? I don't know what. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, he is how he used to be. I agree. It's great being around him. Nice. Cheer you up. Yeah. So have you been following cricket? I like uh, after the World Cup, not a lot. Uh, uh, right now we have some uh, test series coming. Or yeah, is it we do. Going? No, no, it's not. Nothing is going at the moment. Uh, I'm. I. I don't think I'm going to follow cricket till the Border Gavaskar Trophy is scheduled in November. Yeah, I'm also waiting for that. Uh, right now, I'm not watching a lot of it like in general after i have come to college i like only follow like the good tournaments and mostly test cricket or else it's where yeah, world, world cup was the last thing i watched the t20 world cup yeah okay okay what about the ipl this year i don't know maybe who, who do you support? What's, who's your uh, favorite team? RCB. So, <laughs> yeah. That's, that, that explains the situation a lot. No, but but we did do good this time, right? We came back from a 1% chance to qualify to actually qualifying winning seven games in a row. Yeah. And yeah, then losing in the knockout. Like, like that that is the theme of rcb all the time like we fight well but we just need a win need at least yeah. one win who do you think is the next big player from india 
Shubman Gill. You know, many people say that he's like a flat track guy. Like if you maybe mm-hmm. play him in Australia, he'll do well. But other than that, he just doesn't. No, I think he he will do well in the sense that he uh, can like take up responsibility in all three formats. I uh, I don't know how he'll perform uh, individually, but overall, when things average out, I think in five to ten years he will be like carrying a lot of the responsibility. Yeah, you you did not try for your college team for your college. Is there a college team? Yeah, we do have a college team, but uh, I actually did, did not play a lot of cricket when I came here. We have a like. Uh, our co- intra college tournament between our branches and everything i played there but then because i am not playing a lot of cricket i was not not at my best so i uh, did not even like show up for the trials of the uh, college team i mean i wanted to but i think i just uh, like priorities i guess right now yeah do you do you play a lot of cricket now i i don't actually i i i haven't even played for my like intra college thing i haven't played any cricket i i've played like cricket in my corridors right in my hostel yeah, that's corridor. pretty fun actually yeah yeah and once maybe we went outside and we we rented like this indoor stadium and we played cricket 15 of us went and we played cricket indoor cricket uh, box cricket box cricket okay so much like the cricket yeah yeah it's not as good as that it was just a ground small ground covered in a net that's what it was yeah. it was fun though yeah, cricket like cricket is something i always f- wish i could play more of but for some reason i am just unable yeah. to at the moment in my in my podcasts you know what i do is i i know that they are like slightly boring okay because firstly i i am enjoying it pretty far so i bring a guest before that i i go to a room and i i i assemble a group of people who hate the guest okay and then i tell them to brainstorm questions so we <laughs> a group of 6 7 people yes. brainstorm questions about a person they hate to make it slightly interesting okay okay yes. and uh, if that also does not work out i ask about love i ask a lot of questions on love so yeah, i think i <laughs> i i saw some of your episodes i could yeah the trend i i i always like end up with questions of more like i always start with silly questions and then i go towards serious questions like if someone is into i i know what they're interested into they're my batchmate so if someone is into geopolitics i ask them about geopolitics and then i end things with related to meaning right like what they find meaningful and what is their long term goal aspiration so what i am trying to do is i'm trying to create a time capsule okay that's how i look at these podcasts i'm not earning any money this is probably a waste of my time but i'm creating a time capsule all my vlogs are a time capsule all my podcasts are a time capsule so that is what so good that's to look at it yeah that's how i look at it. time and capsule as in yeah as in yeah. like 10 years 10 years from now if i had to look back at it it, it, it would, i would i would have i would have fun looking at it that's what i mean by that yeah i mean i wish i could uh, document and record things more often as well i am trying to and uh, it's good to see you do that it motivates me to do that should keep doing that what are your like long term plans now what are you uh, looking for in a 5 10 year horizon uh 
firstly it's it, to be honest it's it's likely what i have realized in this field that this is not a very linear journey right and arguably no field on this planet is a linear journey but because of the fact that you have to do so many qualifications it becomes even more complicated so what happens is that every it's, this is five and a half years of mbbs four and a half years of mbbs one year internship then we have to give a exam called neat pg right and mm-hmm. then our rank will determine what speciality we will get then we'll do pg then we'll uh, finish pg and then we'll give neat super speciality and then our rank will determine what super speciality we are getting right that's the most linear way we can go and ranks will det- will be determined by how much effort we are putting what is our mindset at that time a lot of things so i can't just say that i want to be a cardiologist i i see myself doing a cardiology residence the residency in next 5 years because i don't know for to be honest i can aim for that but in the end i i also have this acknowledgement uh, this realization in my head that i am not in a government college i am in a private college i did not do well in neat ug so i'll have to work extra hard to do well in neat pg so i i'm not going with a fixed mind that i want to do this specific residency and then that specific super speciality right now it's like i i really like the advice of carl newport there is there is no such thing as passion it's just luck and then commitment right for example mm-hmm. if we look at sachin tendulkar it's possible the first six balls he played none of them touched the bat he would have lost interest and left the game over there but luckily one of the balls touched the bat and then he worked hard in that sport and then that become it yeah. his passion so that's what it is no, so true. even so even if i get like physiology if I, even if i get a pre clinical subject like physiology and if i don't get a subject like surgery i will take it and i will work hard in it i will do something in that field i will try and become a pioneer in that field i don't have a preference that i want i don't want to do this like that okay i understand it's uh, difficult to navigate as of now what about you you said you wanted to build something of your own right yeah but right now i'm not sure what it's going to be and in what form when i came to college i i before coming i saw a lot of uh, like drop out of college in your second year build your own business type of content and that was my mindset but uh, after spending 2 3 years i had guess i have uh, to be reality sinking in uh, like first things first right now uh, i'm not even like i am trying not to even look at the long term just want to get things sorted one year at a time at the moment yeah i feel that's a really good way to go about it yeah because i i did used to have a lot of long term visions but i ended up uh, not working for them again and again mm. so i realized like life should be a 20% planning and 80% working towards that plan and i don't think i'm keeping up with that ratio so yeah i just got to focus more on doing things mm. i guess we are like out of topics to talk about uh yeah. and this video will end in like 2 minutes 25 23 Two seconds minutes. this yeah yeah so thank you for being yeah, on the show it was good yeah thank you for having me i enjoyed thoroughly today uh i i enjoy i always enjoy having conversations with you like i am not afraid to share that thing that i sometimes uh, feel might sound pseudo intellectual or uh, something 
it's always good having a conversation with you the topics we come up with things we talk about i wish uh, this was offline we could have like had even better conversations i think we could have expanded on things even better yeah. nonetheless yeah. i enjoyed i enjoyed it yeah i i should have showed up with some more preparation uh, but i did not that's I that's what on my side have more of yeah. these candy talks where yeah. you can just talk about anything we want to yeah and yeah. it's even better that we I, I i liked all the parts where we were just talking with the flow yeah me too